yeah, it's that kind of morning. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna some coffee. Today we're gonna make elderberry syrup. We for sure need it. But first I'm gonna clean up the house, kitchen a little bit, get some coffee. And get the baby. elderberries which I get from Star West Botanicals if I can't find them on my own. My goal is to grow our own elderberries but another story for another day. Um, and then I have about a pound of astragalus. Now I might add a little bit more astragalus but we'll see. You can find my recipe in my book The Homesteader's Herbal Companion. It starts on page 127 and I'm going to go through this recipe with you but I'm also going to link the recipe. It's on my blog in the description below so you can actually follow along. I think the recipe in my um, blog is actually a little bit different and I like it a little better than the one in my book. So it's been updated so definitely check that out. But basically it has elderberries, astragalus root, ginger, clove, cinnamon, water, sugar, and honey. Now I constantly get the question, do you have to add the sugar? No, you don't have to add the sugar, but the sugar does act as a natural preservative. And so if you're gonna keep this syrup for any amount of time, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have some type of preservative in it. So the honey alone isn't gonna do that. That's why we add sugar. And most of the syrups that you buy at the store, whether it's cough syrup or an allergy syrup, um, it has sugar in it as a preservative. So that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna add the honey until after it's cooled down a bit because we want the honey to keep its natural properties. Now, if I were making syrup for Everett and he's less than a year old, um, then I would skip the honey. So just keep that in mind. Same rule applies if you're a mama of a little, little, um, then you would skip the honey completely. The honey is just an added, uh, you know, has lots of good nutritional benefits and kind of helps you with allergies and inflammation. So we've reached the point where it's been boiling for quite a while. Um, we can see on our spoon that all the yummy juices have been let out. I've got baby spit up all over me, real life. Um, and we are looking really good on the elderberry syrup. So the next step is to strain all of the elderberries and astragalus and cinnamon and ginger root and all that out of here. and. Um, the one question I get asked a lot is, can you reuse all of that stuff? Like, can you save it and reuse it? The answer is no, because you've already extracted all the medicinal benefits out of it. What you can do is you can give it to your pigs or your chickens, or you can just toss it uh, or throw it out for birds. They will eat it. It is good and healthy for them. It does help the little bit that's left in there boost their immune system as well. So you can certainly do that. My chickens love it. My ducks love it. Everybody on our homestead loves it. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna strain this into a bigger bowl. Then I'm gonna add the sugar. Could get a little more to make it kind of syrupy and then let it rest for a while and add the honey.
A lot of people ask me what kind of sugar to use. I get this from Costco. This is the organic evaporated cane juice. So it's not sugar, it's evaporated cane juice. And I use this for all of my canning, for all of my um, food preservation, and even for elderberry syrup. people ask about the astragalus so the funny part is um, astragalus is actually probably a bigger herb with immune boosting than elderberry is like a lot of people are like oh elderberry let's just do elderberry and, and that's great because elderberry there are studies that prove elderberry fights the flu and common cold but astragalus is huge in boosting the immune system and so basically what you're gonna do is with this recipe, so a lot of people take it every single day, but like me, I'm at home all the time. If I'm not going out, I don't take it. Um, so my husband takes it because he goes out every single day. I might take it a couple of times a week or if he's told me like, hey, I've been around somebody, a client that's sick or whatnot. Um, but I don't take it every single day. Now I will give it to Junior every day because he's around neighborhood kids a lot. Um, and if he went to school every day, I would give it to him every morning. But um, I, I don't, I personally, I'm not around a lot of people, so I don't take it every day. So the way that elderberry and astragalus work together is that astragalus boosts your immune system. So let's say you're going on a play date with a bunch of kids. Um, and so that astragalus you take it before you leave, an hour before you leave at least, um, or at least sometime in the morning before you leave. And that says, oh, my immune system needs to boost up. So what, what your immune system is doing is boosting itself up while you're there at the play date. It's at, it's at its peak performance, okay? And then throughout the day, it kind of comes back down, okay? So it's telling your body, everything's coming at me, you know, my immune system needs to be good at tip-top shape right now while I'm in this situation rather than waiting to try and catch it after the situation. So that's what astragalus says. It, it, it boosts your immune system. It's like a shield, okay? It doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody, but it's pretty effective. It's actually really effective. Um, now, elderberry is a little bit different. It does boost your immune system, but it also helps fight the cold and flu. So astragalus is kind of like the preventative more of a preventative and the elderberry is more like a, okay i got sick heal me kind of thing and then they work hand in hand so as a preventative you would take the concoction uh you know one tablespoon per day for an adult um or you can do up to two tablespoons sometimes i get my husband to do two tablespoons a day because he's a larger person um, and then one table or one, two teaspoons per child. So I actually give Junior a tablespoon as well. So he's about 85 pounds. And so I give him a tablespoon as well because I feel comfortable. You really can't overdose on elderberry and astragalus, but if you don't cook it down long enough, it can cause an upset stomach. So that's why a lot of people don't do a lot for kids because it can cause, you know, a little tummy ache sometimes. Um, but we do the tablespoon. I've been doing a tablespoon with Junior for, gosh, probably since he was five. Yeah, so we've been doing it for a while. Now, just what I mentioned, the so elderberries are not poison, but the seeds in the elderberries do have chemicals in them that can cause a really upset stomach. So the reason that we boil down elderberries is for that whole reason. When you boil them down for at least 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes. I do mine for an hour. Um, it gets rid of that chemical that gives you an upset stomach that can be poisonous. Um, so that's why you wanna you wanna cook it down. It's very important. And then strain out the berries. You don't want the berries in there. A lot of people are concerned. Like you get the bagged berries, you get some twigs in there. That's fine. It's fine. It's not gonna kill you. You're not gonna like gnaw on a twig. You know, it's just little pieces, and they're they're gonna be okay. The process of boiling gets out that chemical as well, so that you don't get sick uh, from, from the berries themselves. If you do get sick, so we've gone through the preventative portion of it, but if you do get sick, then 
as with anything in herbal medicine, you would take your dosage, so let's say you're an adult and you're taking two tablespoons as a preventative, then you would take that dosage every two to three hours as a non-preventative. So as a, oh, I've got it, here's, I need something to heal me. So you would take that same exact dosage for two, every two to three hours until your symptoms are gone. Now, I am not one of those crazy medicine people who are like, oh, this is going to heal everyone. Because everyone has different bodies. Uh, you got different issues going on. There could be some underlying issues going on and it might not help. But I can tell you that nine times out of 10, it has helped. It has helped my family. It has helped people that I make the elderberry syrup for. Um, I have had people get the flu and get, you know, like diagnosed flu, like tested positive for the flu and opted not to get the Terra flu or whatever it's called that can make you like crazy. Um, but opt for the elderberry syrup, taking it every two to three hours and their flu is gone in like two days. Not even kidding you. I'm not even kidding you. Like I've seen it happen with my own eyes. Now we have not gotten the flu. Well, Junior's never gotten the flu. I haven't gotten the flu since 2000 and Five, 2006, January 2006. Um, I don't know that Mark has ever had the flu since I've known him, but we don't. And Junior used to have a compromised immune system when he was a baby because he had asthma. And so I loaded him up on the elderberry and he saw a lot more kids then than he does now. And so we're a living testament. I know families that have gotten the flu that are a living testament that, you know, look, this stuff stains by the way. Um, so I encourage you to get it and try it and it's amazing. So, get you some. We've finally found names for the three girls. To go along with Barney Fife, we have Thelma Lou, Juanita, and Daphne. And if you know the Indian Griffith show, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. My husband watches that show every night. Whenever he's working out, he watches Indian Griffith. And he's like, you know what? I'm naming the ducks. And the ducks are going to be named this. <laughs> so that's what their names are. Okay, so my elderberry syrup is done. I've added my honey. It's on low right now. The reason I'm not going to show you the rest of this process is because I've got to wait for my husband to get my canner out. Long story, can't get to it. But what I'm going to do this year is I'm going to put it in quart jars and then I'm going to can it, water bath can it, for about 20 minutes. At that point, you should be able to leave it in the pantry. I'm going to leave one jar out for us in the fridge. So once you open the jar, it needs to stay refrigerated until it's completely gone. Uh, now, your elderberry syrup open should last at least three to four months. Some people can stretch it to five, but it's probably gonna be gone before then if you're taking it every day. So just keep that in mind. So you can water bath can elderberry syrup, but just make sure you're getting a good sugar ratio to your syrup and that you're bathing it in your water bath canner for at least 20 minutes. It does not affect the medicinal properties of it. The only thing it does affect is the honey. So if you don't want it to affect the medicinal properties of the honey, Either skip the honey and can it, um, or you can leave the honey, it adds great flavor, or don't can it at all. Just stick it in your refrigerator and keep it in there until it's all gone. So, all right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Short, sweet, to the point, right? Elderberry syrup is so easy to make. Everyone should be making it. Every single home setter should be making their own elderberry syrup. It's that easy, you saw in this video. It was basically just boiling stuff, and that was it. Um, so you should be making it and you should get my book, you know, this book that has elderberry on it right now, you should get it because it has a lot of good information in it, a lot more recipes that you can use. Um, a lot of them are me medicinal, a lot of them are non-medicinal, yeah, it even has food in here. Come on, food, there's food in here, using herbs and food. So check it out, I'm going to link all this information below, I'm going to link the recipe below if you don't want to buy the book. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great day. Happy home studying and happy herbing.